Hello and welcome to the inauguration of Berzelius, Sweden's new supercomputer for AI. My name is Sara Moser and I work for Knut and Elise Wallenberg Foundation as Director of Strategic Research. But today I'm very honored and happy to be the moderator for this inauguration and the official opening of Berzelius. Berzelius is Sweden's most powerful and fastest supercomputer and it's specifically designed for AI and machine learning. The purpose of Berzelius is to enable world leading research in Sweden in the areas of AI, machine learning and data driven uh, life science. And it's both a research at universities, but also Swedish industry in collaboration with Swedish academia. Berzelius has been made possible by a donation from Knut and Elis Wallenberg Foundation of 300 million Swedish crowns or 29.5 million euro. And the donation has been given to Linköping University and the National Supercomputer Center there. The supercomputer has been built with our partners, NVIDIA and ATOS. And today I have with me here today, Jan Ingvar Jönsson, who is Professor of Medical Cell Biology and Vice Chancellor of Linköping University. Marcus Wallenberg, who is the Vice Chair of Knut and Elis Wallenberg Foundation, but also the Chair of SCB and Saab, and one of the key initiators behind this investment. Jensen Huang, the CEO and founder of NVIDIA. And Anders Ynneman, Professor of Scientific Visualization at Linköping University, and also the Director of the BUS. Wallenberg AI Autonomous Systems and Software Research Program. But first, I would like to give the word to Jon Ingvar. So please, Jon Ingvar. Thank you, Sara, and thank you for all joining and listening to this very exciting day for Linköping University, for the Wallenberg Foundation, of course, also for the research community of Sweden as one of the world leading or most powerful supercomputers, Berzelius is installed at the National Supercomputer Center here at Linköping University. It is a privilege as Vice Chancellor for our university to be able to say some opening words. I would like to start to express uh, our deepest gratitude to Wallenberg Foundation for this very generous donation. It's of course a fantastic opportunity to put Sweden as a leading nation in, uh, as Sara said, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and the new era of life science. Uh, it is the result of a long-term commitment on a very fruitful collaboration between our university and the Wallenberg Foundation. Now, Linköping University has a long tradition in computing and computer science, uh, but it's always a challenge to when one takes on a new development like this, like this infrastructure of Berzelius. But I do feel very confident that we will continue to fulfill this responsibility in Sweden to connect different initiatives and to the large demand on high performance computing in our country. It will give our researchers a fantastic possibility to pursue research tasks that has not been really possible before. And with regard to an international perspective, it puts Sweden on the global map. Uh, Berzelius will of course be freely available for scientists and for researchers at the national level to perform top of the art research, as well as industrial uh, cooperation in the field. And I do anticipate that a lot of results from this project will, that utilize the infrastructure will certainly go beyond the borders of, of Sweden. It will also put Linköping University and our researchers in a fantastic position to strengthen our research and to connect to other initiatives, as Sara said, as the Wallenberg uh, uh, program on autonomous systems and software, uh, VASP, but also the new exciting program on data-driven life science. Two programs, two initiatives, also funded by the Wallenberg Foundation. So I'm convinced that Brasilius and the National Supercomputer Center will contribute to increase the visibility of Sweden and the, to, to, to make Sweden more competitive and build the knowledge and the capacities and the competence for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Jan Ingvar. Great. 
Uh, I'm also very happy to have Marcus Wallenberg and Jensen Wang joining me here today for a dialogue. Uh, so I would like to invite you both. Uh, welcome, Marcus, and welcome, Jensen. Um, and okay. I would start like to start by uh, uh, asking you, uh, why is this uh, investment in this AI supercomputer, why is it so important for Sweden? And maybe, Marcus, you could start. Well, I, I think that, um, as we all know, we are a small uh, export-driven nation and uh, we uh, live to a large extent uh, on our innovations and our progress within research and development to stay competitive in, in the global markets. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, from the family's point of view, we think of it like an ecosystem uh, where open research uh, that we support uh, hopefully will come through into different parts of society and different uh, uh, science-based uh, places, but also into corporations and government and so on, that we will be able to uh, develop uh, this going forward. So um, in, in these different type of programs that we have recently supported that you mentioned, uh, I, I would say that um, following uh, a, a couple of visits uh, to Jensen's uh, NVIDIA, uh, I, I think we all became convinced that one of the most important aspects of driving innovation going forward will be uh, the computational power that is offered today. And therefore, I think that Berzelius will be a cornerstone in achieving this uh, route to more innovative Sweden. Thank you. Jensen, what is, what is your view? Yeah, you know, um, Marcus uh, named it WASP, Artificial Intelligence and Autonomous Systems and Programming. Uh, encoded in those four letters, the Wallenberg Artificial Intelligence and Autonomous Systems Programming are some of the most powerful words of technology today. Artificial intelligence is the automation of intelligence. When you think about it at its core, the automation of intelligence, we automated energy production. We automated power. Uh, we never automated intelligence until now. We were the, we're the only entity of intelligence the ability to solve problems autonomously until now. We have the ability now to uh, use very powerful computers that can write software by itself that seemingly have the characteristics of intelligence, the ability to solve problems. Well, Sweden, Sweden is um, uh, home of some of my uh, favorite companies and best friends. Martin with the Volvo Group, uh, Hagen at the Volvo Cars, uh, Bury of Eric Ericsson, of course, and Marcus uh, that we all know. Uh, it is it is uh, uh, the home of industries. I believe that that we now have the ability for uh, these industries and industries of science based on science uh, to become. Uh, brought into the new era with artificial intelligence. These instruments, these machinery will no longer be uh, big uh, machineries vital to society, but they will be connected machinery with intelligence and capabilities. It requires uh, this new type of computer to help to write the software essential for this future of autonomous systems. Artificial intelligence, autonomous systems and programming are vital to the future of industries. And I'm just so delighted to see that, that WASP with its vision and its commitment uh, to Sweden and to the advancement of science uh, made this incredibly visionary and generous donation. Thank you, Jensen. And Marcus, what is your view on why this collaboration between industry and academia is so important? 
Well, I, I come back to the nature and the situation that we live in uh, in the Swedish society. We, we to a very large extent, uh, have built up a way of working around what we call the triple helix, which basically links academia, business, and government into uh, a cooperating uh, unit. And, and I think uh, uh, the Berzelius computer will very much have uh, the signal of exactly that. And, and um, we now uh, head into the uh, world which Jensen was uh, outlining uh, and, and uh, it's uh, a door being opened to us and it's now up to us to really uh, do exactly what Jensen is pointing at to really enhance our own capabilities uh, to advance research and development going forward and in turn innovation. You know, in every, in every phase of science, um, Marcus, the, there was an instrument that was essential to advancing that science. Uh, uh, Berzelius, uh, the, the, uh, the invention of the idea of chemistry, um, uh, even discovered silicon the 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 foundation by which all of this is possible uh, and uh, uh, at every single generation they had their instrument of science the instrument of science today is a supercomputer it is in the one hand a virtual laboratory uh, where where drugs could be discovered uh, new planets could be discovered new stars could be discovered the beginning of the universe could be discovered it is also a computer science collaborator, because for the very first time, this computer can write software and write software that we can't possibly write because it's able to study so much data and it has the necessary algorithms if running on a supercomputer uh, could, could uh, uh, help us solve problems we couldn't do before. And so the, for the very first time, we're able to do that. The, the importance though, uh, that few realized and that your vision uh, made it possible is to understand that, that in the, for the very first time, these instruments are too expensive, too large of an investment for any particular field of science and universities to make possible. And yet every field of science needs this instrument. And so someone with uh, vision and generosity had to come and make that instrument possible for all of these scientists uh, to be able to use. The other thing that, that for the very first time, researchers uh, need it more than ever is uh, real world data. And that real world data is really only available in industry, uh, whether it's in, uh, in, in transportation, uh, robotics, uh, it could be in entertainment, it could be in the field of medicine. Uh, for the very first time, you really need the, the funding capability of industry, you need the data of industry, and the innovation uh, and creativity of universities uh, to be able to come together uh, to advance science and the industries together. And so I, I think that, that the, the, uh, the, the work that you're doing today, uh, the Brazilian uh, supercomputer, uh, your generous donation is really recognizing all of this, a visionary act to advance uh, the industry and science uh, from Sweden. So I'm, I'm just incredibly delighted by that. Another key success factor for a small country like Sweden is of course uh, the ability to both attract and retain top uh, international talent. Uh, which role do you think Berzelius will play in that context? Maybe you would like to start, Jensen. Well, you know that researchers need instruments. And that's the beginning of a great deal of new science. Uh, unless you have a large Hadron Collider, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, particle physics would, would have a very difficult time advancing. And when some country or someone has the vision and the commitment to make such an investment, uh, it attracts the world's researchers to it. Uh, the same thing with the square kilometer array. Uh, you need to have these instruments of science in order to uh, break new ground. And Brazilius is a new instrument of science 
uh, within this supercomputer, uh, the future of life sciences will be discovered. The future of computer science will be discovered. The future of robotics and artificial intelligence will be discovered. And so uh, it starts with uh, incredible instruments. And today is a very, very big day. And Marcus, what is your view? Well, I, I you know, one, one, <laughs> one big reason why uh, I think I've been convinced that this is the right way to move is actually uh, a couple of conversations I had with Jensen about the fact that uh, the supercomputers at NVIDIA, if I understood it right, uh, actually attracted a number of some top scientists. And uh, I think that uh, what you've been doing in the WASP program in attracting a number of top talent professors and PhDs, et cetera, et cetera, from all over the world, uh, here is an instrument for them to use. And uh, I, I think uh, we have to set the foundation right for them to be as productive and innovative as they ever can. And, and here, here we go. So I, I, I think this is my view. Thank you. And then one final question to uh, both of you. As you know, the purpose of the foundation, the Wallenberg Foundation, is to be landsgangnelig, which means for the betterment of Sweden. So if we, uh, in 10 years from now, uh, when we look back, which role do you think that this investment, both in Berzelius, but also in the key research programs in AI, autonomous systems, software, and data-driven life science, what role do you think do you believe that they have played in uh, for the betterment of Sweden 10 years from now? Maybe you want to start, Marcus. I, 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 uh, I'm, an opti I'm optimistic. Uh, I, I think uh, these uh, platforms will uh, really add to the knowledge and bringing the, the, the really top people into these programs. Uh, I think they will do fantastically good. They will cooperate with other groups around the world. Uh, and uh, then I think one of our biggest challenges will be to translate this into useful projects, products, and services going forward. Yeah, that's... Thank you, you Jensen. It is, it is always so inspiring to listen to Marcus and talk to Marcus. Uh, leaders create the conditions by which other people could do groundbreaking work. And what Marcus has done today and what WASP has done is to create the conditions by which Sweden could be at the forefront of technology, that Sweden could be at the forefront of discovery, that, freedom, that Sweden could be at the forefront of this new breaking field in computer science. There's no question in my mind that in 10 years time, uh, whereas today's industry leading Swedish companies um, are characterized as industrial companies, uh, will in 10 years time all be technology companies. Volvo will be a technology company. Uh, Hawking will make it so. Uh, Volvo Trucks will be a technology company. Martin will make it so. Ericsson will be a technology company, no longer just a telecommunications company. Yuri will make it so. The researchers that will be attracted to Brazilius will enable this ecosystem, the Swedish ecosystem to transform itself from a technological leader, from an industrial technology leader uh, to a technology leader period. And it starts with, of course, the most important technology of today, which is artificial intelligence and software. You now have an instrument that can enable amazing software to be written. You now have an instrument that could collaborate with researchers and scientists to help them write software that no humans could before. And I have every confidence that in 10 years time, Sweden would have been transformed. And we would look back 10 years from now and realize today was the day. And we would have realized there was Marcus's vision and his commitment to Sweden that made it possible. Well, I, I think I'd just like to end and say that Jensen, thanks uh, a tremendous amount 
to you for your uh, your vision and your support uh, in putting this together. Uh, it's been extremely useful. And uh, I know from the foundation side how much they appreciated the support of you and your team. Thanks. Thank you, Marcus. It has been such a great joy. It's, uh, it's wonderful to see this happen for Sweden. And uh, it's wonderful to see great leaders like yourself do this. And thank you from me. It has been fantastic having you both joining me here today. Two of the key persons behind the Berzelius supercomputer. So thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Jensen. And I am for sure looking forward to the coming 10 years. Thank, thank you. Sir. Jan, Anders, congratulations. Congratulations. Do good. Thank you. And now it is time to invite Anders Inneman to give the perspective uh, from the researchers on the investment in the Berzelius supercomputer. So welcome, Anders. Great. So uh, th thank you very much, Sarah, uh, for the opportunity to, to say, say a few words on, on behalf of the potentially extremely large user community that we have in Sweden of, of this re resource. So a big thank you to uh, the foundation for making this possible, for NVIDIA to putting up the effort in terms of the hardware and to Linköping University for hosting uh, the system for us for the future. We, we are really seeing a change, uh, a change in the way that we conduct science. Uh, and how we uh, interpret the results coming out. And, and to some extent, I dare say that even the nature of human insight is to some extent change, changing. Uh, and this is sort of the, the new endeavor of mankind to, to really understand the universe that we live in, in a new way with the help of artificial intelligence uh, and the power that it's giving us. Now, uh, looking at it, the, at the perspective from the potential users, we have the people who are developing the new machine learning algorithms, the algorithms that will uh, enable research into so many different domains. We really need access to high-end resources to be able to conduct this research in a competitive manner. So, uh, so for this community, the, uh, the growing and emerging community in Sweden that are relying on machine learning resources, this is going to be an, an invaluable resource that will empower them and make it possible to be uh, really at the cutting edge of machine learning and artificial intelligence research. So that's one of the huge beneficiaries of, of this, this installation here. And I know that the community has been waiting for this resource to come online to be able to attack those real world problems that we're talking about here. In, in fact, if we're looking at the community, uh, if we're looking at VASP, uh, for instance, as one of the main stakeholders in, in this, we are looking at currently about 300 PhDs, and, and a large fraction of them are either developing or deploying machine learning algorithms in their research. And, you know, our goal is to, by the year 2030, we have, we have had 600 PhDs going through our system, uh, and this is going to be a game changer in the way that Sweden uh, competes on the, uh, on the international arena in, in this domain. Now, uh, going beyond VASP, uh, and we're also seeing how we can enable collaborations, collaborations with other scientific domains. Uh, and I see this, uh, the infrastructure that we are providing now, the platform is the vehicle that will make this possible. Uh, that was mentioning of the data-driven life science initiative, where we're seeing those real world data problems are appearing there when uh, we really need access to the possibility to, to store, to transfer and process these enormous amounts of data. Uh, and you know, that brings me to the current system, to the machine. Uh, for a person like myself, uh, a computing person over the decades, uh, looking into high performance computing for so many years, looking at the, the performance of this machine is mind boggling really seeing, looking at the data transfer inside of the machine when you transfer terabytes of data in just a few seconds internally in the network in the machine. And the memory that we have available is, is fantastic. So, um, uh, so this is really uh, one of the main reasons why we are putting the machine at a place like a high performance computing center uh, like NSC is to integrate it into this sort of traditional environment of supercomputing both resources in terms of hardware, but also the competence to connect it to other resources that we have there. The memory, the storage hierarchies that are existing, the other resources in, in traditional high-performance computing. Uh, 
the challenge, the challenge that I put out there to the supercomputing centers uh, and the challenge to the users is now to really capitalize on the possibilities that we have in terms of scaling up their problems because we have been living in a world where we had small scale use of machine learning, exhausting single GPUs. Now we have hundreds of them available. Uh, and this is a challenge for NSC as an organization to support the users in doing that, but also to the users to think big, to think large and think big data, because now we can actually deal with that data for them. So looking at it from that perspective, NSC is a perfect choice uh, for us. And Lean Shipping has the experience of providing production level capabilities to the high performance computing community for many, many years over the decades. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to seeing this machine coming online. I'm also looking forward to the collaborations that will be spawned around it uh, with NVIDIA, with our partners, uh, and see what that can bring us in terms of knowledge transfer and looking at the technology development together and the application that we see. So once again, uh, on, on behalf of uh, all the potential users of this amazing machine, thank you very much for providing this resource to us. Thank you, Anders. Uh, it's great to hear your enthusiasm for the future uh, with this investment. Uh, as I said, we also have a second partner in the building of Berthelius, and that's ATOS. Uh, unfortunately, Pierre Barnabé, Senior Executive Vice President and Head of Big Data and Cybersecurity Division at ATOS, could not join us here today, but he has sent us a video. So let's uh, uh, listen to Pierre. Dear all, this AI supercomputer is a result of a long journey involving research programs, universities, NVIDIA and ATOS, to define the best solution for AI research supporting programs such as WASP and others. Atos has a long history in deploying, installing, and supporting large HPC and AI supercomputers. It's important for Atos to integrate efficiently the NVIDIA technology and provide a turnkey solution for AI workloads, including specific features for artificial intelligence through the Atos Codex AI suite or for security through customized solutions. Based on such approach, the Berzelius Supercomputers is the largest AI platform deployed in Sweden. It will become the fastest supercomputer in your country and will join the top 500 in June. Expertise is also key to collaborate with our customers. This is why Atos is also committed to support with NVIDIA the AI Swedish ecosystems. The configuration should allow shortly Swedish end users and developers to start running their AI simulations on this DJX Superpod. Thank you. And now we have come to the uh, point in the program where it is time for Jan Ingvar Jönsson, the Vice Chancellor of Linköping University, to officially inaugurate and open the Berzelius supercomputer. So once again, back to you, Jan Ingvar. Thank you, Sara, and thank you to Jensen and Markus for very, very sort of visionary discussions. Of course, I'm a very happy vice chancellor today. And I should say that yesterday we had a pouring rainy day in Linköping. Today, the sun is shining. And I think that's a very good sign. So I would like to virtually invite you to walk over to the computer hall at the NSC to cut the ribbon and, and the home of Brasilius and to start creating the future and to break the grounds. So welcome. So welcome and thank you for joining me here at the National Supercomputer Center. Here is Perselius, the infrastructure we talked about earlier, and this is its new home. And welcome Perselius to Linköping University and to the Swedish research community. And it's time to cut the ribbon.